if Shohei Otani was really betting, do you really think that he's going to fall on the sword here? Or is this poor or is this poor Ipe taking taking the heat? I mean, he has to. He knows he has to. <laughs> you know, doesn't he? Well, I, I don't like, know. The story... The sto- I, w- I would. If you were in the MLB and I was your interpreter and we were over in Japan and you were making, what, 15 mil a year? I don't even know. He's making probably 30 mil a year. What is the guy making? I, dude, I don't know. All I know is Whatever it is, whatever it is, I'm happy to fall on the sword for you. What's up, everybody? Talk and Trash Podcast, episode 16. Mr. Diamond Hands is reporting live from Fort Wayne, Indiana. How's it going, Mr. Diamond Hands? Here we go. It's number 16. Sean, it's got to go Sean Avery. You can't. Sean Avery, man. You, you got to listen. You know, for those who are just checking in, I get so many people that um, reach out and are like, hey, we just discovered the pod. We're going back and watching all of them. When we do our episode, Amesy kind of started this tradition of whatever episode we're on, we we... You know, talk about a player that we like or agree on pre-recording. And 16, we got to go with Sean Avery. He is, he was almost a trasher back in 2004, 2005. Just the ultimate, ultimate trasher guy for sure. I love that guy. Yeah, he was so fun to watch. And like, he's either hated the most or loved, you know, and... uh I think he's still still riding the same uh, characteristics. I think uh, you love him or hate him, but uh, he's grown on me a lot. I, li- I like this game, too. I like the way he got everybody to chase him around, and he took all the energy away from these guys, you know, tried to get them all focused on taking his hat off rather than scoring goals, and uh, it worked pretty well for him. He had a really good career. Listen, yeah. Sean, Sean Avery is just like you said. I've always been drawn to guys, and we're going to – actually, this is a funny segue for a segment we're going to do today is um, I've always been drawn to guys that whether it's good or it's bad, they evoke an emotion, right? Like it's just yeah. like, it's just like wrestling, right? It, it, yeah. I know wrestlers that tell you, look, I don't care if I'm being cheered or I'm being booed. I want an emotion because if you go out yeah. and nobody cares, nobody cares. And Sean Avery was just one of those guys – um, and look, I could draw certain comparisons to you. You're a guy that everybody <laughs> hates until you're wearing their sweater and then you sell out your merch, okay? And um, it's just how it is, man. Sean Avery has always been a, a good guy. I, I know you've talked to him. I've connected with him in yeah. the past. Just a just a solid guy, my type of guy for sure. Yeah, he was uh, he was the ultimate NHL heel. He was he, he was you know I don't think there's. You know, obviously there's other guys too, um, but he, when you think of it, if somebody asked me who is the all-time biggest NHL heel, I would have to go Sean Avery because L- everybody hated that guy. And even people to this day hate that guy. Uh, you, like To this day, guys that played against him still hate him. It's hilarious. Well, listen, I, I, I've always had a soft spot for him. I've always liked him. I wish he was a New Jersey devil. I wish he was a trasher. And, dude, if you go on his Instagram – his son, I don't know how old his son is. He's young. The pu- he's a golfer. Dude, that kid, is he the next, like, big golfer? He might He might be. I hope so. That'd be great for him. It'd be way better of a career for him than playing hockey. Dude, I, I always— Honestly, his body, his body doesn't get beat up. He can do it till he's 65. <sighs> Dude, you know, I absolutely long career. I love when it, I love when Sean posts his son. You know, you know, we got kids obviously, and I got such a soft spot for kids. And I'm telling you, dude, his son is legit. He, I, Sean will yeah. post, Avery will post some. You know, at the driving range, this kid could outdrive me. I mean, I honestly, I watched the Sandbagger before they took it down, and 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 I, I hate to say this for, for on Sean's sake, but I think his kid's got a better putt than him. <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> I'm sure he would want that too. Like you said, it's definitely, uh, man, if you could get a, you know, listen, I told you when my son Dominic was born, I'm like, you know what, I thought I'd want a kid going out rough and tumble. Now I'm like, yeah, yeah. let's look at golf. You know what I mean? It's yeah, nothing. Yeah, golf's great. You know, he's a little stud though. I love watching those videos and. Uh, Sean will be behind him, kind of, you know, pumping his tires. Too. Oh, I love it. That's love good content. It. We need more of that, Avery. Bring yeah. more of that content. No. We see your kids sinking more 20-footers. No, absolutely. And listen, before I forget, because I always do this about 20 minutes into each episode. Guys, if you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, however you're listening to us, just pause real quick, okay? If you're in YouTube, get out of full screen 
and hit the subscribe <laughs> button. I've been really studying yeah. these analytics and I can't get over like 90% of everyone who watches us isn't subscribed. So guys, yeah. I know it doesn't make a big difference to you, but it makes a huge thing for us because it helps us. It bumps us a little bit. So make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment. I don't care if it's a bad comment. Leave it. Yeah. And um, same thing with Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Like I'm starting, like, you know, Ian made the unfortunate mistake of showing me how like the rankings work and stuff. And I really need us to get into the top hundred to start. And then we're going to work our way up. You know what I mean? Like I want to start working our way up the rankings. And um, so definitely guys like, subscribe. And listen, you know what? I'm going to do this on the fly, AMC. I didn't write this down. This is what we're going to do. And not just for new subscribers. This is what we're going to do. Next week, I we're gonna randomly and maybe you're good at this. Let's let's do a random draw of all our subscribers and let's send them a hundred bucks. Okay, yeah, I, I'm sending sure. I'm sending a hundred bucks to a random subscriber, whether you've been with us from day one or you are a new subscriber. So make sure you like and subscribe. We're gonna start doing a lot of bonus content, different stuff for our oh. subscribers. <clears throat> and um, listen, uh, I'm I'm super excited. I know we talked about this on the phone the other day. Can you believe? We got ourselves a major international corporate sponsor. We are officially Team BioSteel. Okay. Bio Listen, yeah. when I was out of hockey for so long, I, and this is no joke, this isn't a plug. Like, like this wasn't on purpose. Like, I remember when I first got back into watching hockey and all that. I used to all I used to see was BioSteel on the bench, right? BioSteel, BioSteel. Dude, I was like, what is that? And, and, and honestly, they are one of the best with um, hydration. They have like a protein line out now. Okay, we are a team BioSteel. We're going to have a link. We, we have a 20% link off for all our fans, all the people. We're going to start posting it up. We, we just finished the deal the other day. Um, clean, healthy hydration, BioSteel. I mean, if you're an athlete, this is what you need, man. I mean, um, yeah. I, it, it, they're... they're I just love everything. And you know what? Just because I, I, I don't, I never want to seem like a hypocrite. Okay. I personally, when we first started talking to BioSteel, I actually personally bought, it wasn't sent to me for free. I bought their cherry lime um, sports hydration drink and I left it in the gym. And dude, I'm telling you right now, my favorite flavors, my favorite flavor is the cherry lime. Unbelievable. And good, um, yeah. listen, as you know, I mean, we got Champs Boxing Club and, and now everybody Everybody at Champs now is seeing all the BioSteel stuff that we're going to start getting. Everyone's into BioSteel. So make sure you support BioSteel. Give them a follow. Um, we are Team BioSteel, bro. Yeah, I'm more of a blue raspberry guy myself. But, uh, <laughs> you know. Listen. Uh, yeah, BioSteel. It's, you know, they're, BioSteel is the, the NHL's official uh, hydration drink, too. You know, they have been for a little while now. And, uh, yeah, we're happy to be on board with them. Uh super excited and uh, i mean it's cool for me i uh, because uh, it's a product that i've been using you know i got i got the little packs to go for when yeah. I'm on the road and then i got the actual the full you know um you know bought supplement bottles for for when i'm at home and stuff like that but great products i mean i drink them out i drink them lots and uh, hydration is really important especially if you're uh playing sports and whatnot so yeah team biosteel yeah Let's go. shout out biosteel we're looking forward to do a lot of stuff with them and, and they like our energy. They were like, wow, you guys are really like, you know, I've been discussing with stuff with them. Like, look, let's do giveaways for you guys. Like anyone that's with yeah. us, we're with them. So, you yeah. know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, this is a fourth line boy mentality, bro. We, we're going to, yeah. we're going to do it all for the team. But listen, guys. listen, last week, just to touch on a few things from last week. And again, you guys could go back, watch episode 15, the rumble in the rink brackets that the big Instagram page, um, hockey fight league put out. It definitely caused a bit of a stir, okay, in good ways and bad. Well, not bad, but 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 you. So just to recap, we got um these two heavy fight analysis guys put these thirty two man fantasy matchups, and you ended up making it to the finals, losing to Darian Skio. Nothing wrong with that, but I tell you, man, we we I got a little pushback from um the Boucher kid from Wichita. I think it's Wichita, right? <laughs> he didn't like that, eh? So last week we were discussing it and um he was in a bracket with you and and you know, listen, we have nothing to do with the brackets or the um yeah. results and they had you beating Dylan Boucher and I think his name's Dylan, right? Is it Dylan Boucher? I have no idea. I think it's Never. Dylan Boucher. But anyway, long story short, we talked about it a little bit and you had said something about you two could have fought or something. 
and I don't remember you saying anything wrong or anything like that. I think he just, um, he got a little bent out of shape, bro. And um, he actually commented, <laughs> nothing nothing wrong with it. I like it because Dylan Boucher's our type of guy, a tough guy. Um, and he wrote, I'm going to read the comment, bro. He wrote, just to clear the air at Ames to Barry told me to let him sleep on that Thursday night. He told me he didn't want to fight, not vice versa. I asked him twice before I skated away if he was sure playing on Saturday. He told me, yes, I told him that worked because Saturday was going to be a sellout. We'd put on a show type of thing. And then, you know, hey, listen, you don't, you don't pick when you're scratch or not. So, but I don't think you yeah. said it. I don't, I don't remember you saying anything. <laughs> I don't remember you saying like Dylan Boucher ducked you or anything. I think, I think you said exactly that, that you guys were. No, we, it was, like I said, we were Saturday night was the sellout night and we were going on Saturday and that was what we thought. And yeah, you know, so it happens, it happens, and it didn't. So, so listen, shout out to Dylan Boucher, man. No, there was no shade to, no, <laughs> sh no, no shade to Boucher there. And uh, listen, that could be a matchup, you know. Next, I didn't even see that comment. That's funny. Yeah, now I get now I, knowing you, you're gonna get all you're gonna get all worked up and stuff. But no, nah, man, shout no, out to. I don't, I don't really give a shit. There's a reason I don't look at my comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, listen. So the rumble in the rink bracket was great. We got so many people reaching out, and uh, it just goes to show you, man. And people absolutely love the enforcing, the fighting, whatever you want to call it. And uh, listen, a lot, a lot, a lot. We we might have to do a special episode dedicated to breaking this down because so many fans, you know, from all these different cities and teams were chiming in. But I do say, everyone, no one really disagreed with you being in the final. So you've definitely made your name known in a very short time in the coast, man. So you and I both know. The fans' opinion actually, you know, it truly means something. So I, I took that really as a, a big compliment for you. Yeah, it was, uh, it's cool. I, I see, I see, I see. There was another one up the other day. It was so outrageous, though. Some of the guys who won against. Did you see that one? No. Another one that went up. No, no. Someone did a different. Someone did a different one with like some other guys in it. It was so outrageous. I'm like, I don't know. Must have been like a 12 year old that did it. Well, listen, hockey, <laughs> ha hockey fight league. Our boy Caden. Um, they're the real deal, bro. I'm telling you right now, like this, they don't just like flip a coin and choose. So big shout out to them. Last week, I got a lot of flack for you discovering that I never watched Star Wars. And um, it was a major controversy that, you know, uh, I was promoting our next amateur boxing show at Danbury War Memorial, Saturday Night Fights, May 4th. And you made the comment, may the 4th be with you, or asking me about Darth Vader and... You know, it came out that I didn't watch Star Wars before. And, dude, I was getting flamed online for not watching Star Wars. And uh, so now I think I'm committed to watching it at some point. But uh, thank you for uncovering that. Uh, the Star Wars thing was definitely a controversial thing last week, bro. Yeah, uh, I was kind of a weird. Uh, yeah, it caught me off guard, to be honest. I thought everybody seen Star Wars. I thought it was like a prerequisite to life. <laughs> well, I, I will. I will have to jump on Star Wars. So thank you for everyone who was flaming me and absolutely. Well, you got a lot of catching up to do because there's a lot of episodes. There's a yeah. lot of. Uh, yeah. Now. Well, I'll, so I'll if see. If you don't start at the beginning, like if you watched them as they came out, it wasn't a big deal. But now you got like a week's worth of, of Star Wars to watch. So. Well, I will. I will definitely jump on that and report back to you. So thank you for that. And um, listen, the last thing last week we we talked about um, Brad Wingfield. He was he got inducted in the Danbury Hockey Ring of Honor two weeks ago. We put out this awesome vlog again. It's on our page. The behind the scenes with uh, Brad Wingfield returning to Danbury. And dude, wouldn't you know it, okay? Two of the most hardcore fans in Danbury, okay? Jeff Kozo and Ron Rogel. Remember, if you watched the vlog, you saw at one point, Shane didn't catch it, but I fell on my ass. I busted my ass on the ice, okay? And um, I think I sent you the video, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, you did too. <laughs> All of a sudden, these two lunatics, Kozo and Rogel, and you... How did how did you get footage of me busting my ass? I told you it was on the live barn. That's why I mentioned no. I just have to look it up on the live barn. There's every rink. I'm pretty sure has a camera on it, 24 seven. That's so scary. Can't get away with nothing out there. Yeah, Th that's pretty scary in itself. But anyway, yeah. of course, I don't, I don't like it either. You know, you yeah, get in a practice fight and all of a sudden the whole league hears about it. Oh, uh, allegedly. But but <laughs> allegedly. But listen, man, let's let's jump right into it, man. We um obviously we're recording. A big weekend ahead for the Fort Wayne Comets. And last week, tough, tough weekend for you. Um, I know you were suspended for one of the games, I think. And 
I don't know if you got any playing time the 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 second game, but tough. What's going on out there? I know it's we're still in this tight tight race out there. It's getting closer yeah, and closer. It's, it's been tight. Yeah, it's uh you know it's it's a game of inches, and we're in a point in a tight race. Like got pretty much got to win every game now. So it's pretty much where we're at. We got a pretty big night tomorrow night. Um, actually, Darren McCarty is coming to town. Oh, wow. I don't know if you knew that or not, but Darren McCarty's here for tomorrow, which will be cool for the fans. People get to meet him, um, you know, and, uh, well, I guess it'd be Darren McCarty was here on Friday, I guess is what we're going to be saying, because this comes out on Sunday. Yeah, so again, <laughs> <laughs> again, it's, it's you know, we it's, it's, it's weird for people when they watch this, because sometimes I got to, like, check my dates and stuff like that. So obviously we're yeah. pre-recording, and, uh, you know, you're starting a weekend off tomorrow, so yeah. we're working backwards, people. You you guys could figure it out. But um, <laughs> listen, last weekend, okay, and it's funny because, you know, at first I thought maybe the Trasher energy kind of rubbed off on him, but it, I realized that he was like this before me. You and I were talking with the families a week or so ago, and um, one of the goalies from Fort Wayne, Brochu, was out there at your house, and you guys were hanging oh, yeah. out, and um, you guys were involved with a heavy, heavy floor hockey game going on with your son, Wes. Yeah. It, it Pretty was standard in my house, yeah. Very intense. I mean, it sounded like it sounded like Madison Square Garden over there. I mean, it was loud. Yeah, yeah. So it's the real deal. So what? What's what, his name, first name? Is is it Brent or Brett? What? Brett. what so, yeah, Brett Brochu. So yeah. I got I got to meet you know over video chat Brett Brochu and really nice kid, uh, up and coming Good goalie, great goalie, yeah, up yeah. up and coming goalie, and you know we talked a little bit, and later that week I get clips of him. <laughs> absolutely uh, becoming a little unhinged, and I know why, and you'll explain it, and um, almost had a full-blown goalie fight, and I was proud for a minute because I thought, hey, you know what? The Trasher energy, it rubbed off on Brett Brochu, and he's trying to fight now. <laughs> but then you told me he had already Dude. gone to a fight early oh, in the yeah. year. Yeah, he's he had that Trasher energy in him to begin with. Uh, he's, a, he's a hell of a goalie, firstly. Uh, he's got a gold medal, I think, with the World Juniors in Canada. Um, he was amazing there with the, with the London Knights. He's an absolutely nasty goalie. Um, but he's got a little bit of a mean streak, too. And I think that's what makes him so good at what he does because he's just, like, very, very competitive. He gets fired up in practice and games, and it makes him so good. Um, but, yeah, I mean, somebody speared him right in the – like, literally, like, speared him in the crease. And I think he insta-shed his, his glove and his blocker. Were, <laughs> he left those. He left those. He didn't need those. And he was uh, he was on that guy's back in a, in a second. And um, the other goalie came down. The crazy thing is, though, we had – so one of our goalies got called up on that road trip. So we got three goalies. One was on the IR on the injured reserves, so he can't play because he's out automatically 14 days off, right? Um, while we're on the road trip, our other goalie gets called up. So now we got one goalie. Um, so we had to get an emergency backup, which is, you know, usually you you know you just take who you can get kind of, right? Um, yeah. So we had an emergency backup, and then Bro stretch, uh, drops his gloves. And then the other goalie probably is thinking in his head, they got the emergency backup. I better go fight this guy and try and get him out of the game. You know, so I think the ref kind of jumped on Broch and told, like, kind of calmed him down. He's like, hey, remember, you got an emergency backup here. But, uh, yeah, he's already got a fight under his belt this year, and uh, I put him up against any goalie in the league, honestly. Well, Brett Brochu, that my type of guy, again, yeah. you know, I was – that was in Wheeling, right? You guys were in Wheeling that game? Yeah, I was in Wheeling, yeah. But and we actually – Fanti, our other goalie, had a fight against Wheeling last year at home. So it's just funny. I don't know why the goalies always get at it with the uh, – Fort Wayne and Wheeling battles, I guess. Well, listen, I listen. I'm a I'm a Fort Wayne Comet because of you, but Wheeling, I got a little soft spot for. I'm very close with their coach Derek Army, who's a great guy. But I'm a Comet through and through. But listen, I gotta ask you, man, if you're not suspended or if you're on the ice, I've I was wondering, like, does that does that even happen with Brochu? Like, I again, no, I, I nobody's. Nobody's spearing our goalie if I'm on the, even if I'm not on the ice. If I'm on the bench, nobody's spearing our goalie. And, and again, that's just one of those the the little intricacies of hockey that people don't get is uh Yeah. And listen, Wheeling's got some tough guys. I like Shaw Boom Howard. He's a good guy. I know you guys fought already. Um I, I have a lot of respect for him. But again, you know, it, it's it's very different when there's a you know, it's like class. When there's a substitute teacher, you know, you could start spitballing around over there. You know what I mean? So I was wondering, I'm like, man, if Ames is on the ice, 
I don't know if Brochu's getting speared, but uh, big shout out to Brett Brochu, my type of goalie, um, and he could play. He's a great goalie, so I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be keeping my eye out on him. Yeah, no, so uh, yeah, man, he's a really good goalie, good kid too. He comes over and plays some hockey. He's, oh, it's kind of scary though, because I, you know, Wes is liking goalie. Taylor likes playing goalie now, so I don't know, man. I, don't, I might have to tell him to stop coming. <laughs> <over>. <laughs> oh man, who gets Brett Brochu in the house on their team? Is it Wes? Is it Taylor? It's usually, you know, to be honest, me and Brett against the kids. Oh, we wow. Just, we, just, we just pound them. Just get well, them. listen, that is the— to make them better, man. That's the how only you, way to get better is to lose. Yeah, that's that's very true, man. That's like, shout out yeah. to my shout out to my younger cousin, my godson, Jordan. When we used, when he was little, I mean, there's, what, a 14-year age difference? I used to beat him so bad in video games to, you know, beat him to tears. And now I can't beat yeah. him if I, you know, if I paid him. The, but, uh, yeah. listen. Fastest way to grow. Listen, so— Getting back to Fort Wayne, man, you've been, you know, off the ice. You've been doing so much for the community. I, I know the um, social media team over there with the comments put out an awesome video of you raising some money. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about, I, I forget what foundation that was, but, um, man, you're doing some big things in the community over there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun, and I have the ability to do it with the following I do and stuff, so it's, you know, it'd be, cr- it'd be crazy not to do it. Um but yeah, I mean, uh, I had an old uh, pair of gloves from Danbury that I still had, and I was just, you know, what am I going to do with what? I don't really need them, you know. So I thought, well, let's auction them off, and it was great the support that I had here and, and in Fort Wayne. But I, I kind of looked around. It didn't take me much, you know, digging to find the Fort Wayne Children's Foundation. They basically help out, you know, children, you know, you know, people, you know, like childrens that deal with abuse um, and stuff like that, and. I mean, I think that's a problem that everybody has been touched with, whether it's themselves or somebody they know. Um, and yeah, they're basically trying to break the cycle. And, and to me, that's very, you know, um, very important. That's our future. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to do something like that. And, and I put the gloves up originally and I think I had a, you know, I had a one bidder and then the the, per, the runner up who didn't, you know, they didn't win the, the gloves and they said, hey, well, I still want to give you this money. Um, you know you got anything else that we could do or whatever and i was like all right well i'll give you a stick and then so we did a set of gloves a stick and then someone else bought a got me to sign a puck for him or whatever so yeah we were able to raise i think it was 1640 dollars um obviously ken at club 93 he's a he's always helping oh the best yeah so he threw something in the pot as well but uh yeah we were able to raise uh you know a little over sixteen hundred dollars and you know we delivered the check and we got some pretty cool content but uh this week was really good man like i got i i did two school visits and i did that and it was you know for me it was you know it felt good because you know uh, i mean i you know a little bit about my story too it's like uh i've had people pick me up and dust me off when i needed it so um if there's anything i can do to to pick someone up and dust them off or help them out then i'm gonna do that because uh that's just how the world works and how the world gets around so no absolutely and and yeah i did see you you were talking to a a school uh i think you said like fifth graders or something like that and yeah i did i did fifth graders and kindergartners on tuesday and then uh yesterday after we delivered the check, we did. Uh, I went to another school with a little bit of older kids and, and did an assembly. So I heard. Yeah, I no, I, I heard. I heard a rumor through the grapevine that you were getting chirped by the fifth graders a little bit. They oh. were they were testing you. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh yeah, they're grilling me. They, they're tough, those kids, man. It's, yeah, uh, these grade five boys in the front row were really giving it to me. I felt like a comedian in a really tough crowd. <laughs> I was like, uh, and I, and they, you know, they give me a book to read to fifth graders, and you walk in there and you're like, do these guys really want me to read them a book? Like, I feel like fifth grade, you're like. Oh, they're going to read me a story? I don't know. You're in fifth grade. You're what, 10 years old? Or 11, maybe? Dude, I had a a very similar situation about a month ago. I got asked to read at Pembroke uh, Elementary School in Danbury. Um, I got a soft spot for Pembroke. My cousin went there, and I was under the assumption that I was reading to first graders, right? So I I go to the bookstore in the mall. And I'm like, uh, actually, shout out to the boss, Steph the Boss Moss, uh, um, our boxer at a chance boxing club. She has a young daughter. I'm like, God, what do I read to a first grader? She goes, go get this book. It's called Pete the Cat. It's like the new thing, right? Pete the Cat. There's like a series of this book, Pete the Cat. Pete the Cat. So I go, I find a Pete the Cat book. 
I'm high stepping out of the bookstore. I think I'm, oh man, I'm going to come with the best book. The first grader is going to be hyped. Read Pete the Cat. I get to the school. I'm speaking of fourth graders, okay? Now that's a big difference. First to fourth grade is very, there's a big, <laughs> there's a big difference there, bro. All right. And I come in with a Pete the Cat book. They're looking at me like I'm the lamest guy of all time. I read three pages and I decided, I freestyled it. I shut the book. I said, what do you guys want to talk about? And it, yeah. <laughs> it ended up for 30 minutes. We literally had probably 20 kids in a room. I came up with like a nickname for each one of them. By the time it was all over, okay, these kids were off the wall. First thing in the morning, like 8.30 in the morning. So I, I'm sure the teacher was real happy with me on a Monday at 8 o'clock. We were hyped. Yeah, getting them all fired up. But, uh, yeah, similar circumstance. Uh, yeah, the, the those fourth to sixth, seventh grade, it's tough, man. It's it's tough, but uh, they won't they won't forget that, bro. It's it's uh, always giving back to the kids. And um, listen, the other thing is I remember maybe a month ago um, – Fort Wayne, you guys had a, a theme jersey, like superhero night or something like that, or uh, yeah. And, and your jersey, pretty cool jersey. Your jersey went for twenty one hundred dollars. The number one, uh, the number one ranked jersey. See, I, I pay attention. I don't even to, think I. Pl- I don't even think I played in that. Did I? I don't, I don't think I even wore it. Like I might have put it on. I feel like you played that game. I don't know, but anyway, I don't think I did. Regardless, it again. I'll have to look, but yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Regardless, the, the, honestly, the city here is crazy. Like the support that we get in this town is, I think there's only one team in the league that gets more fans than us on average. Well, listen, I mean, we we've always talked about Fort Wayne and and just the the wealth of hockey that's come through there. But your jersey went for twenty one hundred. I forget what foundation it went to, but listen, you're doing a lot of big things, and 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 you should be. And listen, you're like me. You don't want to be, you don't want to be like overly commended for stuff. We do it from the heart, but it's important that people know the things that you're doing out there. And uh, listen, we're talking about, you know, you, you know, auctioning off gloves, sticks, all that. And we're going to put a, we're going to put a link to it and stuff, but we're going to start, you know, people keep asking me about merch, right? Trasher merch, yeah. talking trash merch, diamond, diamond hands, hands merch. Art, some diamond hands art is happening. So, and, so, uh, so listen, I think we should plant the seed because yeah. you told me what what could be the greatest idea I ever heard in a long time. Do you want to tell everyone about how they can potentially very soon own their own diamond hands? <laughs> yeah, so I you know I've been thinking about getting into the art art game. I feel like uh, I feel creative. I'm pretty creative, and uh, you know I may have been inspired by some things, but uh, yeah, we're gonna start doing some. Uh, some art, some hand casts, and we're gonna maybe have a little diamond hand of your own. We're gonna make one of one diamond hands. We'll do a little like cast mold. I might paint it, you know, we'll get crazy. We're gonna make some one-on-ones though. So um, I'm looking forward to doing that and, uh, you know, getting some merch up and stuff like that for, uh, you know, for the summertime here. Listen, I need for our, for, for our, my back, you know, we're working on changing our backdrop up a little and, you know, I need for the set here, my own one of one diamond hands, the guy just punching through every league we get into here. Um, that's going to be a crazy collector's item. And, uh, when you told me that idea, I was like, this, this guy's a, you know, you're a marketing well, genius. Did you know how I, did you, did you see, did I tell you how I got that idea? Well, I think it had to do with. You know, you're such a romantic, which people don't know. You bought one of those casting kits for you and your yeah. lovely, lovely uh, Jamie. And I think, think for, I think for your, <laughs> I think for your anniversary, right? You were gonna do. You know, it's so sweet. You were gonna do something together with the hands. That's so. Yeah. You're, no, it's for the whole family. Oh, okay. Oh, see, don't downplay Jamie. I thought it was just for Jamie. But anyway, but yeah, why don't you tell like where, where the- So I had the casting kit on the table and I took a picture for the auction and I literally, and this just shows you like how the internet works. I literally was, there was a tiny corner of the box. Like, I don't even know how they knew what it was. There's a corner of the box in the picture and someone commented, not interested in the gloves, but I'm interested in the diamond hands fist cast or something like that <laughs> and then i obviously right away i'm like there was like three comments everyone liked it i'm like all right well that is a great idea um sorry jamie you have to step aside on this one i need to use this all right <laughs> yes yes please we can uh so yeah come in come into uh 
coming to a store near you or coming straight from us, man. A diamond, legit diamond hands. You could do some custom poses. I could think of a few things yeah. with the with a certain finger you could probably do for oh, yeah. fans and uh definitely it's gonna Shocker. it's gonna be awesome man and you know who i think will be your number one customer for this will be all the haters out there i absolutely you know i felt like we had to do a segment today on haters because they really do deserve a lot of credit for a lot of things that go on in the world and i feel like dude as things are starting to pick up with this podcast for yourself for me we just seem to get more and more, and I, I, I'm not being sarcastic. I legitimately love the haters because they keep things going, and yeah, uh, they pay the bills. Listen, you know, we got a friend, as you know, uh, Travis Rigdon, who might just be the most polarizing player, and he's not really playing right now. And Travis Rigdon might be up there with you as one of the most polarizing figures in hockey. And I just love this guy because, again, I, I'm drawn to people that bring out emotion out of people. And for some reason, Trav, they just, there's something about Travis that they just cannot stand and i absolutely love it because i mean at the end of the day all these people that are hating or they're hating on people that are doing stuff while yeah they're just you know going through the motions going to their nine to five sitting in their mom's basement and they're just upset that we decided to say hey you know what i'm gonna take some risk and go for something in my life and do some hard shit you know when they're sitting at home trying to be comfortable working their nine to fives hating their life and then you know what satisfies them going online and chirping people going online and be like you suck man you're a loser it's like uh all right <laughs> sure buddy i think we all know who the loser is in this situation so so listen tr- uh, you know listen if if you guys um don't know who travis rigdon is just Instagram, you know, go on his Instagram. I think it's Trav for Oilers. He's, he's got to be the most hated hockey goalie on the planet. Right yeah, now. and I. But lo- he's also the most loved in both ways. You know what I mean? He's, I, got, he's got fans that love him. He's got haters. And, and like he, we all do. And I, I love the guy. I've always liked him from day one. And and I got to tell you, he's got a great podcast. You got to check him out too. Slang in the biscuit, I think, or Sling in the biscuit. I don't want to mess it up. But uh, listen. Me and him were talking, and we're going to definitely, you know, do some cross-promotion together. I think it's fitting. But anyway, we were talking, and he, he, we kind of had the similar idea. I would like, and you know you know, I like to market stuff. I'm thinking about we should start. I, I really don't like putting our ideas out there because people are just ripping us off lately. I really want to start a program called, bear with me, Patrol. You get, like, patrolling Patrol, where you and Trav and maybe even me, we find these trolls and we patrol the trolls. Meaning, dude, <laughs> let's set up a clinic. Everyone's going to fuel the fire big time. These guys are all going to want to troll us even more now. Listen, let's start something called Patrol, P A Troll. And let's set up, whether it's in Danbury or out. A boxing w- match? No. With me? Well, I love a boxing match, but everyone yeah. sits there and says, you can't skate, you suck, this, that. Let's have races, okay? Let's do Daniel Amesbury versus <laughs> you trolls. And listen, everyone thinks they could score on Travis. They, you suck, Travis. You're the worst goalie of all time. Let's let's put like an, you yeah, know, we're in, listen, we're in Olympic season, right? There's an put Olympic. Your money where your mouth is, pay, you know, loser pays for the flights. Listen, exactly. Let's set up our own style, like a troll Olympics, because there is the Olympics yeah. this summer in 2024. I was like, let's start a troll Olympics. And, and, and I think it would I be think great. Every single one, though, has to end with sparring me. Or else I would love that. I would absolutely love yeah. that. We got the gym, obviously, Chance Boxing Club. Uh, listen, so I'm thinking about putting together a Troll Olympics, and uh, I think it would be great. And maybe, hey, listen, maybe we get Sean Avery out here. He's did got. You tr- see, did Did you see the guy that I put on blast the other day on my Facebook? Uh, and I would. Did do, you see that? What? I smoked that guy so bad. What? I took it down because. What an absolute loser. Again, <laughs> you, you talk about, like I said, man, look, like I said, I, I don't like to pick on anybody, but when th- there's certain clown cakes like this gentleman, what oh, yeah. what, an, he, what an absolute loser. Here you are posting about this auction for the kids and what you were trying to do, and he said something along the lines of, 
you know, basically you're doing it for yourself or you're poor no, or no, something he stupid. Said, yeah, he said, oh, the poors are at it again. He tagged some page or whatever. But I guess, you know, it's funny because the funny part is, like, he actually messaged me after it. He's like, man, you got me good. Like, <laughs> I kind of respected the way he handled it because he's like, he's like, I didn't even take my original comment down after you put that up because I, I actually deserved it. He's like, I didn't read the comment. He's like, I just seen your auctioning gloves. I thought you were doing it and this and that. And. So it was funny because uh, he. So, anyways, he he basically apologized. He's like, "Yeah, that was a total dick move by me." And then, and then he started sending me screenshots of all the all of my fans and like my buddies that were direct messaging him. And oh my god, did he ever get the gears? So uh, I well, took it down for him. I was like, I put this guy on blast for a few days. Everyone ripped on him in his DMs. So now he knows what it feels like. Well, shout out, and, shout out to him. At least he took it like a man. And uh, but listen, yeah. and he he's got he's you know the best part is all these trolls are they got their top fan badges. You know? Oh, so I love it. They troll me, but they troll me. But then you look and they're like top fan, and they got like a little star because they're top fan. It's like oh, okay. Well, listen, right. you know, you you know, I like to do things backwards and do things different. You know, obviously, teams and sports and athletes, they always they always look out for the legit fans. But I think we got a legit look out for the haters and the trolls. So look out for the patrolling, the Olympics. I'm going to put some ideas together because I think we could do a fun thing with these trolls. Yeah. And yeah. they'll end up being. And then we get to punch them in the nose after too. Yeah, or they can just admit, that, or or they can just admit they they love you or Travis or yeah. myself Kiss or my whoever. Foot or fight me, one or the other. And listen, ma- and listen, you talk about trolls. Maybe Sean Avery could come down, and he's got his own trolls and stuff. It would be an amazing he event. Can do, he can, he can, they can go do jujitsu against Sean. Avery. Oh yeah, they don't want that. Uh, Sean, Sean, yeah. Sean can fight, hands, grapple, whatever. So he, Sean's the oh, real yeah. deal. He'll but, twist you up. But listen. Getting back, let's get into the world of hockey right now because, as you know, the trade deadline is gone. We are moving closer and closer to the playoffs. And, um, you know, I started looking at the standings the other day. And, you know, my Devils, I don't know what the hell happened this year. We we have so much promise. We just hit so many barriers this year. Um, I got my reasons on why. You guys I, get a new coach? Yeah, but, dude, we had a lot. I don't like to use the, the excuses, but a lot of injuries, a lot of— I don't know. We're we're almost there, but you know, I'm looking at I'm looking You're a good fan. Hey, you're a good fan. Listen. <laughs> I I try to put my GM cap on, right? And I try to see what our GM is doing and I see what he's doing and it's not it's one of those things where a fan has to understand a GM's job is to think about today and tomorrow. A yeah, fan yeah, a f- a fan is only thinking about today, and I understand they're about that. The next game that's coming up. Yeah, they're they're thinking about you know their parlays and all their betting and fantasy sports. But my point is, I understand what he's doing. But be that as it may, I'm looking at the Vancouver Canucks right now. This is a tough, tough team, and I know that's out. That's your territory. And then I started researching. When is the last time a Canadian team? won the Stanley Cup. Is it 30 something years? Yeah. Is it that odd? <laughs> yo, what yeah. the yo, it's is not it not odd, no. Well, listen, at the end of the yeah. day, at the end of the day, let's be honest. Okay, the majority of the league is Canadian. So it, it's like it doesn't matter if the Vegas Knights win. If you look at the roster, yeah. it's Canadians. But my point is, it's crazy to me that a Canadian team, I, I and I correct me if I'm wrong. Was it the Canadians? Literally, the Montreal Canadiens, the last one to win a know. cup. I mean, I have no idea. Who do you think? I mean, listen. Every year, it's funny. Every year around this time, Toronto Maple Leaf fans start losing their minds Dude, because I, 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 <laughs> it's funny because every year they still they fall for the same tricks. You know. Well, you know, it's funny because again, I've been out of hockey for so long. The Toronto Maple Leafs remind me of my New York Yankees, right? Every year, it just seems like we're going to go all the way, no matter what. And, you know, it doesn't end up like that. They find a way not to. But now that I'm back into hockey, I absolutely love watching Toronto. I love watching yeah, Maple Leaf fans. They lose. Matthews is fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, they are they going to ever get over the hump? Like, like, like is, do they have? I don't think so. Bro. When when Brad Wingfield was here a few weeks ago, yeah. we were talking. Do they? I feel like they just have too much skill. When it comes yeah. to playoff time, bro, you need the dump, the chase, the four checking. Yeah. You need four lines. 
do, it, yeah, you gotta build your you gotta you know like it's great to have a ton of skill but at the same time you need chemistry and like you know what i mean and so if you throw a bunch of skilled guys in the room it's generally you know that's not always the best way to you know build a playoff team but um yeah i don't know it's uh energy in the room is an important thing i don't know what it's like there but yeah there's a lot of skilled guys and you would think like looking at them on paper you're like man they should be there for sure like they should be there for the last couple of years you'd think but um yeah i don't know man i like personally if i'm going canadian teams i think Ed- i like edmonton still i think edmonton is a lot like toronto just in the west i just think yeah. i just a wagon though they i i'm telling you right now this vancouver team mm. all right Listen, they got a great goalie, okay? We know defense wins championships, okay? Yeah. Vancouver's going to be interesting to watch. Um, but like I said, as we get closer, I'm going to start paying a lot more attention. Kind of, I want to get my yeah, predictions. You know, playoffs is going to be fun. Yeah, start of the playoffs, I want to, like, we got to give our official predictions on record so we can't we change it. playoff brackets? I, I think we should. And I think we should really go on record with who we really think is going to take it. I kind of yeah. have, I kind of have, I don't want to say anything now. I want to wait till like, a few days before the playoffs start, but always a fun time if you're a sports fan, man. It's a, it's a, it's yeah. a fun time. Now listen, hockey. Uh, we talked a little bit about Brett Brochu before. Um, goalies, man. Um, and this is kind of where I think my New Jersey Devils have an issue. Okay, we don't have a number one goalie, right? I feel like back in the day, all right, when I grew up watching hockey, every team had the number one goalie. All right, and yeah. then you had a backup. You know, and now everybody splits games. It splits. Everything's split, bro. And it's yeah. crazy because it, it, I feel like the term load management, I feel like that started in basketball and yeah. um, or even baseball. You know, pitchers, once they hit 100 pitches, you got to take them out. I mean, it is yeah. what it is. Uh, basketball now, you know, God forbid these guys who play two, three times a week get tired. Um, man, so, so. Uh, my guy, Martin Brodeur, best goalie ever, in my opinion, okay? Yeah. I think you said Kirk McLean, which was sick. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. I'm pretty sure you no said way. Kirk McLean, but whatever. I Be- didn't say Kirk McLean was the best goalie ever. I said growing up, <laughs> that was our guy. Because it was Kirk, Kirk McLean was the guy in Vancouver during the, you know, those were the days with the, of the Canucks, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those were the days. Pavel Bure and Chino Ojek. Yeah, that's, that's true. I grew up watching, watching hockey with my old man, but... Uh, well, Broder is the Broder or Wah. It has to yeah. be one of those two. How well, can you go with anyone else? Well, anyway, Marty Brodeur came out, and I loved it because, you know, he's a goalie. He's been there, done that. And he really kind of – interesting article came out about why the goalie position is so volatile. And, and it's again, it comes down – I can't believe a term like this has entered into hockey, like load, load management. management. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy because here's the thing, right? We talk about it a lot. You know, I manage boxers. I promote boxers. I deal with boxers. I tell people all the time, boxers, there's so many talented boxers, but if you're not active, it means nothing, right? Like, it's like you have to stay active to like, it's like shutting down an engine, turning it back on. It's crazy. And like now it's like goalies. um, I mean, who's the best goalie in the league? I mean, the old days you have, you know, you have your top three. Now you got to think about it a little bit. I mean, it's it's crazy that the term load management is now in hockey. And I'm looking at the screen here. Um, it, it's 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 you know he had a he had a great quote. He's like you know it's especially the Devils, you know, because he's with the Devils organization. And it's like we've had like I feel like we have 17 different goalies this year. And it's like um, I don't know, man. I think it's just another one of these things coming into hockey and uh, part of sports is this load management. What do you think about load management? Um, I don't know, man. I think like all sports are starting to go with, you know, they going into the adolin adolin analytics. Yeah. Analytics. I sound sound not the smartest, but um I think that that's what it comes down to these guys and like I do think that that's kind of what they're thinking. They're they're there's obviously some calculations they're based off of and they're saying if guys are playing, you know, I don't know what a lot of goalie a lot of games for a goalie would probably be like 40 or 50, I'd say. But um yeah, I mean are they playing differently? Maybe like maybe their bodies just can't handle the way they're playing the butterfly, this and that. Like, I don't, obviously that's been around for a long time now, but um, I don't know, man. It just seems like maybe they're just kind of calculate. They're just trying to, you know, minimize the risks of injuries and stuff like that. But 
yeah, it doesn't seem very hockey like, I guess, to think about that stuff. But I mean, at the end of the day, um, if if that's the calculation and that's what works, then I mean, you're seeing every team doing it. So it's kind of yeah. I don't know if every team's doing it. There's a reason they're doing it, and. Uh, I mean, you know, we see it. I mean, we got three goalies here, and they've all played a decent amount of games. So yeah, um, we're kind of rotating and stuff like that. And we got we're lucky we got three nasty goalies um, here in Fort Wayne. But yeah, yeah, I feel like you see it, you know, all over the place. I, you know, I mean, you got in New York, you got Shesterkin and Andy yeah. Quick. Like those, those are two top goalies. Like obviously, Quick, Quick's a little bit older. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have Quick playing every game because he's a little older and it's great that he's got Shesterkin and there's the two of them and they can just bang it out and they're both top goalies as far as I'm concerned you know I'd say the best goalie in the league is probably Vasilevsky yeah in, uh, Tampa Bay if I had to you know if I had to pick but I mean yeah it just seems the way things are now they're kind of just splitting games but yeah it doesn't seem very hockey like but I mean there's got to be a reason for it maybe we'll get a goalie on here and they'll explain are goalies still insane when I grew up, I was always told, "Listen, goalies are different, man. They are really different guys." And you know what? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't play goalie, and um, you know, I, I didn't spend too much time with the goalies, with the trashers either. To be honest with you, um, except for Sly Dagan in our second year. But our goal, the, the knock on goalies are they are a little different, bro. Are they? Are goalies I don't insane? Know. I so. I, yeah, obviously everybody knows that, and I'll always razz goalies about that. Like, I'll always crack jokes about it. But uh, for me, I think, like, what makes a goalie – What they always say goalies are weird. They're different. Like, what makes them different? Like, what do you think it is? Do you think it's just the fact that they're willing to get 100-mile-an-hour puck shot at them? Is that what makes them a little different? Yeah. Because I fight, so – and I t always tend to vibe with the goalies. Like, I'm always <laughs> friends with the goalies. I don't know why that happens, and uh, – I don't know, man. Maybe I got some goalie vibes in me too, but uh, but I don't know, man. It that's what I always heard, and yeah, definitely there's some that are off. And but I'm gonna be honest, the last few teams I played on, the percentage of like pretty normal goalies is going up. So is that is that changing. maybe it's the load management? Maybe they're not maybe as maybe it's nuts. the load management. Yeah, because maybe they get to spend a little more time on the bench with the load management situation, so they get to like socialize more. And, like, yeah, <laughs> listen, it's funny. You watch a hockey game, and it's like the, you got the whoever's not just playing by himself. Yeah, the goalie's just in his own world, and he's just yeah. like, you know, it, it always looks well, like the thing is that you gotta respect of a goalie, and I can relate to this. It's friggin' hard. Yeah. Be folk, like for me especially, and I'm sure I know I know me and you are very similar in this way too. Like you're not doing anything sometimes for a long time, and then all of a sudden you're doing everything. It's like man, to stay focused and dialed in like that is really difficult. It's like when you don't play. Like for me, for instance, sometimes I don't play for 15 or 20 minutes, and then I get thrown out there, and it's like whole everybody's in flow state everybody's playing every like couple minutes they're out and they're kind of like you know they're getting into the swing of things and then it's like i'm getting out there it's like my first shift of the game and i'm you know and it's like it it's hard sometimes to stay focused like that so i don't know maybe that's why maybe that's what it is maybe they're just good at focusing and I don't know, man. I, I always vibe with the goalie. Listen, so I, I, maybe, maybe I'm a weirdo myself. Listen, to our audience out there, if you're a former goalie, a current goalie, if you feel you're a couple nuggets short of a happy meal, hit me up because I'm really <laughs> interested. I'm really interested to learn about these goalies because I remember growing <laughs> up, like I remember winger was like, dude, goalies are weird. Like, like um, you oh, know, yeah. I want to hear some of the crazy goalie stories out there because, again, I mean, you look at some of these goalies at the end of the bench, and they look like they got like monkeys juggling knives in their head. You know what I mean? I can like, I can guarantee you that I'm just laughing. I think it's funny. Just, <laughs> first of all, that comment, couple nuggets short of a half. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I had. I had <laughs> listen, that's yeah. th that's what I see, man. And uh, yeah. but listen, moving on to something more our pace. Oh, I was just gonna. What I was saying oh, yeah. though, sorry, is I bet you there's a couple guys on the team that would call me and Broch the the weird the weird cats. You know, well, we're always uh, off in there talking about some stuff, and uh, yeah. you know, we're we're uh, you know, we hey, might we might have to I have Broch on, man. Too, man. I, I I I enjoy fighting. Like, yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm kind of weird. I mean, you're standing in front of a hundred mile an hour puck. Kind of kind of weird, probably. Well, compared to most people, uh, most listen, people don't like that kind of stuff. Listen, I just pray that my goalie doesn't. He doesn't. I just pray Broch doesn't influence my son too much to be a goalie, <laughs> man. Come on. <laughs> well, I listen, can't afford it. Unbelievable, bro. <laughs> but listen, moving on to something a little more our speed, man. You know, world of hockey. 
you know, again, you know I do on the Trashers Instagram, all these fight reviews, all these type of reviews, man. And someone put me on for like a month now. There's an Instagram account called at 204 Authentics. And this man, I don't even know his name, but he has been dying for me to pay attention to the Manitoba Moose have a guy named Tyrell Bauer, okay? And he keeps sending me, check out Ty Bauer, check out Ty Bauer. I'm like, who the hell is Ty Bauer? So finally I caved the other day. This kid is 22 years old, six foot three, like 208 defenseman. And he just laid a beating earlier this week on a kid that the whole situation the whole situation reminded me of you so bad. Now, if you remember earlier this year, you absolutely, when you were playing defense, starched a kid, I think on Watertown. You 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 absolutely leveled a kid, and this rookie challenged you, and it was an absolute beatdown. As a matter of fact, I said in my fight review with you months ago that it was the first time I saw a shutout. Like, this kid didn't throw any punches back, didn't land anything back. <laughs> Shut out in a hockey fight? I like it. Dude, this kid, Ty Bauer, literally did the same thing this past week. Um, go on at DB Trashers. Look for the um, review. This kid laid an absolute monster hit a little bit after the whistle. Okay, and this kid, I forget Toronto, I think that the, the, the AHL team is, um, came after Ty Bauer, and it was a major mistake. And I actually overlaid your beating from Watertown on the uh, on the clip. It reminded nice. me. I didn't see that one. I'll so watch that. so shout out to Tyrell Bauer. He is a bad boy. I'm gonna be watching him, and it just made me think, man, man, a year or two down the line, can we get? Matt Rempe versus Ty Bauer. That might be the matchup to watch over the next year or two. But I thought of you because I'm like, wow, this this whole thing reminded me just of Amesy when you, you know, earlier this year in Danbury. It was crazy. You got to check it out, bro. Yeah, I will. Definitely. I love those videos that you've been doing too, those clips. Hey, man, I'm trying. You know, so many people now are sending me so much crazy stuff. A lot of fan fight videos, which are my favorite. I got a couple drunk fan fights coming and uh, it, it is absolutely <laughs> hilarious, man. But uh, yeah, shout out to my boy. I don't even know your name, but at 204 Authentics on Instagram, put me on to Tyrell uh, Bauer. Definitely a guy I think you would love. Um, but we'll see, man. We'll see down the line. Hey, you make it up to the AHL if he's still there. That's a dream matchup right there, too. But uh, damn, man. And listen, let's let's uh, let's move on. I want to start a new segment. Okay. We're going to call this the free-for-all segment, all right? Free-for-all. We talk about anything, everything, sports, life, pop culture, whatever. And let's start with baseball opening up this week. It is, You know, baseball is technically my favorite sport overall. I love baseball. I'm a New York Yankee fan from day one. Um, reminds me a lot of my grandpa growing up. We watched so many games together. Uh, and you and, and we we uncovered earlier in our podcast journey, you used to play baseball, correct? Yeah, that was. I mean, that was kind of my main sport. Um, for yeah, for for you know, that was the main. That was always like what my dad kind of pushed me more into, and I did all the camps, and I always go. You know, I always did extra. I always played on the extra teams, and you know, played summer ball and this and that. So yeah, I was always a baseball player. Hockey was kind of second. And then obviously, you know, uh, just being the physical guy that I am, I just kind of got drawn over to hockey and kind of stepped away from baseball. But yeah, I played baseball up until I was like 16. Um, but yeah, I, I love baseball. We actually, it's a little different in Canada. Like we used to play with wood bats. Like Oh, wow. Yeah, that's hardcore. Which was, you know, I, I talk to people here and they're like, they never played with wood bats. No, nah, it's all. In college, even in college, I don't think they use wood bats. Yeah, it's all but, metal. Um, it's all metal. Yeah, we use wood bats. I think when we turned like 15, I think we started using wood bats 14 or 15. Well, listen. So, but yeah, baseball is a great sport. My, my buddy from uh, Maple Ridge actually got traded in uh Around Christmas time, from the uh, from St. Louis to uh, Boston, boo! So I might, need to, might need to trade this hat in. <laughs> honestly, I have to get rid of it. This and might be the last time you guys see me in a Yankees hat. I'm don't sorry. Don't you dare! Don't you yeah. absolutely don't yeah, I knew you AJ dare! AJ wasn't going to be happy about hearing that, but I thought I'd wear it one more time for you, though. Whatever, well, well yeah, whatever, <laughs> dude. Listen. I'm hardcore with all sports, but baseball, listen, because, you know, my son, Dominic, you know, everyone's like, you know, is he going to be a Yankee? My son could like whatever he likes growing up, any sport, any team, but with baseball, he has no choice. He has to be a Yankee fan. That's the one thing I'll put You know my, that he's going to be a fan of another team if you draw the line like that? No, never. He has no choice. Yeah. No, baseball, <laughs> listen, 
football, basketball, hockey, whatever. He can like whatever team he likes. I will support his decisions. Baseball, listen, I, I, I don't care. We could go to war over it. He's a Yankee <laughs> fan. He cannot like anyone but the Yankees. That. That is my vow to you. I, I promise look, you that. I'm looking forward to this conversation when he's like 15. He's like, you know what, Dad? I think I like the Red Sox. Yeah, and I'll be like, you know what, Dom? You're, Get getting, a, you're getting a job now. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Rents but, due. Rents but, due. No, no. Shout out to my son, Dominic. But listen, <laughs> he is going to be a Yankee fan, uh, and that's all there is to it. I think my wife, right. Kim, my wife is on board with it, too, so I have the support. Right. But uh, listen, let's. so starting off our free-for-all segment, man, Shohei Otani, you see what's going on with this nut job? Is he getting a little jammed up? I've heard a couple things about him lately. What's he getting jammed up or what? Well, listen. He's not making enough money, I guess, or what? Well, listen. I mean, listen. Here's the thing. You and I both always say, right, we are all innocent until proven guilty. I know we, yeah. live, we live in a world today where everybody jumps immediately on a story, and I hate yeah, that. You're- Guilty till proven innocent in the world. Everybody, already. everybody wants the clicks. They want to be the first. I like to sit back and let things uncover. But long story short, Shohei Otani, who's basically probably a billionaire already, he is the face of baseball. Or he is an unbelievable talent. Um, he went to the Los Angeles Dodgers. You know, arguably the second biggest market in baseball after New York, in my opinion. And this man has an interpreter, as you know. Um, you know, he, he, he comes over in Japan or China or whatever. Uh, he's Asian. He's got an interpreter. And um, listen, man, I don't know what to make of this story. Basically, what the media is saying is that his interpreter, all right, Ipe Mezuhara, I think his name is. I, I don't, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. But long story short, this interpreter, whose job is to literally just sit next to Shohei and interpret, Allegedly ran up a debt with a bookie out in California and allegedly has been stealing from Shohei Otani to pay his debts. Now, again, everybody is innocent until proven guilty. I like to let things play out before I give my honest opinion. But if Shohei Otani was really betting, do you really think that he's going to fall on the sword here or is this poor or is this poor Ipe taking taking the heat I mean he has to he knows he has to <laughs> you know doesn't he well i i don't like, know the story the story I, w- I would if you were in the MLB and i was your interpreter and we were over in Japan and you were making what 15 mil a year i don't even know he's making probably 30 mil a year what is the guy making uh, dude i don't know all i know is whatever it is whatever it is i'm happy to fall on the sword for you aj no well, problem. well, listen, I'm my, stealing your money. I'm making the bets. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this story is so complex and it's just, I don't even really know other than what you just told me. So, well, li- listen, you know, first of all, people jumped so right are away. They, are they trying to say that it was Otani's bets then? Well, listen, the, the first thing the media said is, uh, so, you know, in layman's terms is Otani is betting on baseball and he's got the interpreter being the bag man, basically, you know what I'm saying? But now yeah. it's coming out that the interpreter is just some degenerate that ran up a tab and somehow the interpreter has access to Shohei's funds and was paying yeah. guys off. So the whole thing is crazy. It's Again, pretty suspect either way. Dude, it, it, but, but dude, it just brings me to my boy, justice for Pete Rose, okay? Here's a man <laughs> who's arguably one of the greatest hitters of all time. He is definitely a trasher. And Pete Rose who got in trouble for after he was a player, by the way, betting on baseball, and he's not in the Hall of Fame, which is a sham to me. And, and, because of the betting thing, Yeah. Right? So now, I mean, long story short, so it's going to be— So now Otani can't be in the Hall of Fame. Well, listen— oh, dude, or, Pete Rose get, or Pete Rose gets entered. Listen, you and I have to start investing. <laughs> we have to start investing now in Pete Rose trading cards because I have a I have a very f- suspicion that MLB is going to have a change of heart soon, okay? But dude, the whole Otani thing. Guys, let us know what you think. Is Otani a degenerate with, you know, he just signed a over half a a half a billion dollar contract. It. That's the thing I just wouldn't get. Like it's like why would you even need to 
like do that. Well, I uh, well I fun. agree. Is it not enough? Is it not enough? Well, listen, you listen. I'm not again innocent till proven guilty. Otani's yeah. not being charged with anything right now. He yeah. he had a listen. It's funny. Without his interpreter, he had a, a press conference the other day, and what what grinded my gears is there was no questions allowed. Okay, he made a statement. He didn't know. I'm so, you know, this guy's been stealing from me. I don't know. I'm kind of torn on it. But listen, you and I have seen people with all the money in the world. It doesn't end, yeah. which brings Just us. trying to get your nut. Which, Just which, trying to get your nut. Which brings us, again, and I want to preface by saying innocent until proven guilty, to our man. He ain't my man. Never mind. Let me take that back. Mr. Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy. Yeah, fuck, you better take that back. Listen, I was wondering when you said our man, I was like, no. Yeah, not. yeah, let me. I, I That's just a natural thing when we start shouting people yeah, out, good or bad. Not our man. D is yeah. not our man. Listen, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy. Maybe a month ago before we knew what the hell really was going on. Listen. Holy, dude. Listen, again, what the uh, hell? What in the hell is I mean, going on with these guys out here? I mean, what I is know. what is going on? Again. I know. I mean, I could t- I again, know, again, I listen, know, again, listen, this is our free for all <laughs> segment. We talk about anything and everything and we're going to expand the segment as crazy. we go. Listen, that Meek Mill clip. I don't know if you've seen that thing floating around, but that's weird. There is a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of their boys. <clears throat> there is a lot of weird stuff going on out there. Well, and- I mean, it's like kind of, kind of like, remember the Epstein Island kind of thing? Like, I mean, it's kind of. Listen, yeah, kind of strikes the it, same it's, chords it's, as that. It's, like, you it's, know, they're kind of doing weird shit. All listen, those people. listen, and and I just, you know, my wife Kim made me watch this Nickelodeon documentary the other day. Yeah, There's like watched, four parts. I watched some of it. Yeah, it's honestly, it's 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 sick, man. These people are sick. Listen, you know, you know what? We're not gonna delve too hard into the, these <laughs> topics. You could Google That's it. A whole new. We need to start a whole new podcast yeah, for that yeah. one. We'll have to put that on Rumble so we don't get kicked off YouTube. Yeah. Uh, what what <laughs> I, what I will say again is. Everybody is innocent until proven guilty. And again, you know, I got to be honest with you, Amesy. I'm a very down the middle with a lot. And, and I know, you know, yeah. with, with this thing with Diddy, Daddy, Puff Daddy, whatever. I feel for his kids, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, like yeah, these are innocent. Fault. These are innocent kids that are getting dragged through the mud. I know what that's yeah. like at times. And uh, yeah. listen, man, oh, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, more than ever, we just got to continue to to watch over our kids, watch over these kids, because it there is yeah. some weird stuff going on. I'm not saying what is and isn't. Okay, I'm yeah. not trying. To, I'm not trying to start a controversy. Hey, again, I want to preface: innocent until proven guilty. Um, I also don't like, bro, that the media just jumps on anything. You know, I, I yeah, you know well, because again, I mean, that's just clicks. They're just looking for clicks. But the thing I see, the thing that bothers me the most is like. You know that Nickelodeon, like I w- only watched the first episode of that Nickelodeon one or whatever you were talking about last night. And it's like, you know, for a fact that there's way bigger names that are doing the exact same shit and they know it's starting to leak. So they're like, you know what? It's starting to leak. People are starting to kind of figure this out. So they just throw some guy under the bus, which pro- was definitely doing that stuff. But you think that they would, uh, you know, there's way bigger names doing the exact same shit and they're not talking about that. That's what pisses me off. I'm like, because I was expecting them to really talk about what's well, going on. Well, listen, you know, at the end of the day, It'll come out. well, at the end of the day, I guess the reason I'm bringing it up is one, it's a hot topic right now. And two, you know what? You got to take care of your children. And you know what? Do the right thing in life. Yeah. And karma, karma is undefeated. And you know yeah. what? Let's see how it plays out again. Everybody well, is. I mean, you know how I am with, with that stuff, and we're in this crazy time. I don't even put pictures of my kids on yeah. the internet. Yeah. You know? Like, I don't even really talk. Like, we talk about family and stuff. We talk yeah. about family, but I don't put pictures of my kids on the internet, man. There's so many weirdos out there nowadays, and people always tell me. People are like, oh, my God, your kids are so cute, man. You should really get yeah. them into, like, some sort of commercials or yeah. something. Like, they're smart. You do that, and I'm like, there is no, no chance, chance. No I way. would ever – put my kids anywhere near Hollywood or anywhere near any sort of acting, no. anything, any nah. of that stuff. It's just such a weird dynamic to put yourself around a bunch of adults that have so much power. Um, and you know, you got to feel for those kids because the kids that were at Nickelodeon were in a situation where they were literally pay, supporting their families and they were scared to say anything because they're like, well, if I ruin this job now, mom and dad don't eat or, you know, like they're making all this money yeah. and they're living good. Their family's living good because of that. 
And there's this power dynamic of an adult and a child. And then on top of that, this is my employer and they can take everything I have away in the matter of a second. So it's, yeah, man, the, it's the power dynamic. Yeah. It's people in weird situations. Hollywood's kind of strange. Listen, I just think, uh, you know, again, I'm not trying to go off on a tangent here. This is our free for all uh, segment. Just, you know what? Got to keep your eyes open at all time. And again, yes. every everybody's innocent until proven guilty. And you know what? At the same time, let things play out before you make any decisions or judgments yeah. and this and that. But listen, something more lighthearted. Did you hear the news that there's going to be a second Happy Gilmore? Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Yes. I thought it was a joke when I first seen it. I seen Shooter, Shooter McGavin was talking about it. And I thought it was a joke. I thought he was just saying it for like clicks or something. And then... All of a sudden, now it's all I've been seeing the last few days. So I'm excited. I hope it's not like one of those really bad sequels. Because, you know, sometimes you always talk about yeah. that. It's like, you know, I don't want it to be a shitty sequel. It's like, well, you know, I think so I hope it's not, but I, I think it'll be good. Anything of Adam Sandler is usually pretty good. Listen, I, you know, I think our generation, it could be the worst movie in the world. I think we'll all somehow find the, the brightness of it. I mean, Happy Gilmore. I mean, growing up when I, I that mean, was the best movie. he was the guy, right? I mean, um, yeah. I mean, you, I feel like you should be casted in this movie. I mean, um, I mean, it, you, you embody that happy Gilmore hockey spirit I would, too. I think that'd be hilarious. Yeah. I don't know if I can after some of the comments I made there in that last conversation we had, but yeah. No. <laughs> well, hey, listen, we didn't listen. We didn't say anything wrong, and no, and, and and we yeah. keep saying innocent until proven guilty and allegedly. Yeah. So we didn't say anything. But, that would be funny. Like, honestly, I've always thought about, too. Like, it actually would be kind of fun to be in, like, acting kind of thing. I think I'd be – I'd I have think some fun with that. Whether I, it was pro wrestling or, or a movie or something, I'd do it. Pro do wrestling. It. We are a week pro away. Pro wrestling is where we're going to go. We are a week away from WrestleMania 40, okay? I, You know me. You know me with the wrestling, bro. This wow. to me, this to that me. That makes me feel old. This is this is like for me. This is like Christmas season. You know, I love WrestleMania. I love wrestling. We got ourselves a doubleheader. Obviously, WrestleMania moved to two nights, so we got April sixth, April seventh in Philadelphia. Um, the tickets are absolutely outrageous, or else I try to go really? down there. But uh, listen, it's it always starts off with uh, you know twelve noon stand and deliver NXT. Our boy Tony D'Angelo fighting for the NXT title, and then again I think it's like seven o'clock. First night of WrestleMania, then Sunday 7, second night of WrestleMania, and we got The Rock back. It, it's been That's crazy. Dude, the past few weeks, it's it's felt like the late 90s. It's insane wrestling. Wow. Bro, I feel like it's Where's moved. Stone Cold at? I want to see Stone Cold. Dude, listen, I've been hearing some rumors. I don't know. Everyone's making their predictions of what's going to happen. I'm telling you, we're in a golden age of wrestling right now. You got to get back into it because it's moving more to like. I've still never been to a live like WWE, but I would well, we're definitely going to change that soon. But I'm telling yeah. you, hop on wrestling now because we're moving into a, a golden era. It's almost like the Attitude Era is coming back. It's crazy, right. and I didn't, I forgot. Next year, I think, re, like uh, WWE Raw is moving to Netflix. Really, that's so, crazy. So Netflix they're, is stepping their game up here, eh? dude. Netflix is, uh, you know what? It's it's going to be they're, crazy. They're changing with the times. That's good. The smart smart move. There's there's a rest there's a some sort of wrestling event coming here to Fort Wayne. I, I hope that somebody can leverage me to get in on that. I want to run into the ring with a Comets jersey on and smash <laughs> it with a chair. So Dude. if there's any way to get me in on that, I think I don't know what it's called, SummerSlam or something or not SummerSlam, something slam. It's kind of a knockoff of WWE, maybe if I had to guess. Hey, listen, sometimes those are the be that. sometimes those are the best shows to get into is those yeah. independent oh, circuits. I'd be happy to let someone slam me through a table or or hit me with a chair. Oh, man. Well, listen, guys, um, you know, actually, you know, we're releasing this episode. I just realized it's going to be Easter. So happy Easter, by the way. Happy we should have started Easter. with it. Wow. We should have wore our ears, our bunny ears. I didn't think, you know what? The heck? It's been a lot going on, bro. I, I, we were I, talking for the first half the episode like it was like we had games coming up. Well, you know? technically, we, we do. Eh, we're figuring I mean, it we out. we do, but. Listen. <laughs> Listen, we're not professional broadcasters yet, all right? We're figuring we're this out. But listen, the reason I'm saying that is tomorrow is April 1st, which is April Fool's Day, which is technically the 20-year anniversary of announcing the Danbury Trashers. Did you know that? Wow, that's crazy. 20 years. What are you going to do? You got something going on? You got so listen, cooking? shout out to my guy. The mayor of Danbury, Mayor Alves, is actually, we're going to, and I think we're going to make a little mini vlog out of this, um, we're actually getting a 20-year 
anniversary like proclamation for the city of Danbury. Nice. So April 1st every year will be Danbury Trasher Day, which is fire because I remember nice. it just brings back so many memories. I remember 20 years ago. So it's not happy. It's not April Fool's Day then. No, it's, it's, tra- it's, it's going to be Trasher Day. So, so we changed it. It's so changed. yeah, so I re- I just it just brings back so many memories of planning. And it was my dad's idea to announce it on April Fool's Day. We were just playing so many mind games, bro. So big shout out to the city of Danbury, Mayor Alves, making this possible for us. We're definitely going to get some footage. I know Shane's going to be there. We're going to do a little short vlog, 20-year anniversary vlog. And, uh, man, I just can't believe it, man. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. You know, enjoy your youth, kid, because, you know what, when you're going you're gonna to you're gonna get to be my age one day, you're going to see what it's like, man. It's been tough. I've, I'm, you know, I feel it. I feel it being on the ice every day with these guys. Well, listen. Some guy called himself old. Someone on our team, Dukes, he turned 25 the other day, and he called himself old. I just turned sideways, and I looked at him, and I gave him the dirtiest look. I'm like, what the hell are you saying? You're 25. Cactus Jack. He he, pissed in vinegar. you kidding me? Yeah, Cactus Jack is nowhere near old. Shout out to Cactus Cactus Jack. Jack. But uh, listen, man, as we close in on the episode, man, I want to give a huge shout out. I had to take my vest off. I'm getting hot, man. You know, shout out to my boy Skinny and Snuff for sending me a shirt. Yes. Joey Merlino, Joe Snuff, my boys. And listen, I don't know if you saw it, but um, Joey Merlino is opening a cheesesteak spot in South Philly. No way. We're definitely going nice. to have to go check that out. Big shout nice. out to our guys over there. I got to let them know, like, lately on the ice, instead of, you know, instead of calling it sauce, you know, when you make a little sauce. Oh, uh, don't start. We've been calling it gravy. Look at that Duh. gravy. Dude, Look at that you gravy are, I just tossed. You are I'm tossing gravy out there, AJ. You are a pain in the ass for that one. But shout well, it's out. It's good, though, isn't it? It's kind of a cool little name, I'm trying to pave in the way, change it up a little bit. No. Chucking gravy. No, whatever. Chucking gravy. Big shout out. (laughs) Make sure you guys check out the Skinny Podcast with our boys, Joey Merlino, Joe Snuff, our guys. And um, listen, I got to give another major shout out to one of our big sponsors, too, um, who you connected with, Summit City Bullets out there in Fort Wayne. Um, Yeah. What a great guy. Huge supporter. Um, We're going to put a link in the bio. Look, all your shooting needs. Legal shooting needs, by the way. Yeah, All right. Guy's got, he's got some pretty rad. He, I think he makes bullets. Well, he does make bullets. Um, yeah, pretty cool, man. He's got, uh, he does like custom bullets, got red, red ones. I think they're all red. I don't know if they're all red, but now, do, um, yeah, man. You know, so, so I connected with him. You know, I reached out to him. I thanked him for, you know, his sponsorship. I know you initially yes. connected with him. You know, he's got one of those Amesbury Trasher jerseys that you yeah. sold. Or, so, yes, he does. Yeah, he got it the other day. It's so, awesome. so I told him, I'm like, he dude. He was asking. He was poking around, and I was like, I got, I got you, man. We'll, we'll sort you out because no, you've been really good. So. No, big shout out to Summit City Bullets, and he's got a. That's an exclusive jersey, bro. That's a big yeah, time jersey for him. It is, yeah. And totally. uh, listen, he's guys, already asking about another one. He's already been asking about another one. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. One is pretty crazy to have one of those, you know. And listen, big shout out um, to to one of Connecticut's best up and coming boxers, Jacob Marrero. He's not at a Chance Boxing Club. He's out of um, Ortiz Boxing Gym in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We call him Lefty because he's obviously a lefty. He's a southpaw. Lefty Marrero came back. He's twenty four years old. All right. He's now five and zero with four knockouts. He had a five year layoff. Um, we got to get him on the podcast because he has some story of why he, you know he 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 actually um, had a tough situation. And, uh, you know, you talk about an underdog, a bad boy, in a good way. Um, Lefty Marrero, I want to give him and Coach Carlos Nieves a shout-out. They just won last week um, in Rhode Island. He's someone to watch. Big shout-out. We got to get him on the podcast. Now, listen, our guy, Coach Dave, Coach Dave McDonough, he has his own podcast, The Coach's Corner. I believe believe he has a podcast coming out with Lefty. Um, He is one of these under-the-radar boxers that's going to make some noise. He's a friend. And uh, we got to get him on the show. Maybe try to get him on the ice too. But big shout out yeah. to big shout out to Lefty, Coach Carlos, the whole team at Ortiz Boxing. And uh, yeah, man, <clears throat> any plugs, any shout outs? How's the roller doing over there? What's your roller they sent you? Oh man, they're unreal. Roll recovery, yeah, same thing with them. Uh, I mean, I the guys are kind of laughing because I I just talk about it every time I'm in there rolling my legs out. Um, yeah, elite, elite, uh, stuff. So roll recovery, man. If you don't have one, I got the link in my bio on my Instagram and, uh, you can get a little discount there and, uh, get your own man. Cause, uh, 
There's nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. No, absolutely. And and we're going to definitely get some for the gym over here for some of these guys. And uh, again, yeah. again, big shout out, Team BioSteel. Make sure you support them. We're going to have the link in the bio. Get your 20% off with them. And uh, again, guys, like, subscribe. We thank you guys for the support. Always great seeing you, Amesy. And uh, yeah, yeah let's keep it going, man. We tune in next week. Thank you guys for coming.